Hey guys, welcome to my channel. My name is Reading Bear, and I hope you are ready for some more stories. And today, we'll take a look at some new entitled people content. If you enjoyed my content, please don't forget to subscribe to my channel and post some bear emojis in the comment. And now, let's dive right into the stories. The first story is titled. Corrupt HOA president put a legal fence around my property, claims he owns my house. I live in a neighborhood that has a voluntary HOA which meant when I moved in, I had a choice to formally join or not. Mainly due to some of the horror stories I have read I decided against joining the HOA and just keep my head down instead. I keep my house and lawn looking fine though so even though I am not in the HOA I am still basically following most of the standard guidelines. I can tell that the HOA president is not happy about me not joining though because it means one less person giving money to the HOA and basically him. It didn't help that the HOA president happened to live right next door to me and made it his mission for a while to try and convince me to sign up for it. One thing that I want to point out now even though it might not seem important is that I only have one leg. I do have a fake leg and when I wear pants and shoes it is basically impossible for somebody to tell unless they already know. On days that it hurts I do limp sometimes and that will all be important for this story a little bit later. Anyway, the HOA president was angry at the fact I wouldn't join and even tried to tell me things I was doing were against the HOA policy like having my grass cut a certain time of day or parking my car facing the wrong way, in my driveway, I like to back in. I just keep reminding him that I am not part of the HOA and don't actually have to follow their rules. What happened next can only be described at the HOA president trying to get even with me for not joining the HOA by trying to take some of my land away from me. On the side of my yard that I share with neighbor I have a small garden that I try my best to make look nice. I am no expert, but I am learning more as I go along. My neighbor ended up building a fence around it one day and put a sign that said, no trespassing, property of the HOA. I was angry and went to talk to him to find out what this was about because it was my property. He claimed to me that it was actually HOA property and I probably just never heard about it before since I wasn't a member and couldn't go to any of the meetings. I wanted to fight it and he told me that I would have to take it up with the HOA at one of those meetings I couldn't go to. I was not signing up for this just so I could go and fight this guy over property that I knew was mine in the first place. He had no right to it, and I wasn't going to stand around and let him try and bully me. At first, I even tried to find out when the HOA was meeting to try and get in and explain to everyone else what the president was doing to me. He made sure that I couldn't get in even though I am pretty sure as long as you live in the neighborhood you are allowed to go even if you are not a member. I was going to take matters into my own hands and not let some guy with a giant ego take my garden away from me as some sort of sick revenge. I waited until he was gone one day, and I burnt that wooden fence down until I had access to my garden again. Don't worry it was a very controlled flame and I had the hose on hand. I then took the now cool burnt pieces of fence and chucked them onto his property to show him what I thought about his HOA abuse of power. He clearly didn't like having me show him up with my own revenge. He clearly told some random lie to a bunch of the HOA members because the next day I had not only him but a small crowd of people standing at my door. He was complaining that I created a mess and put it in his yard while I told him that he shouldn't have built a fence on my garden and called it HOA property when it wasn't. He turned and told the crowd that he had no idea what I was talking about and since he was the president, and I was just a nobody they were quick to side with him. It was a warm day and I had planned to lounge around the house most of the day, so I was just in a shirt and some shorts. So, the fact I had one fake leg was obvious from the moment I walked out the door. I was also in a little bit of pain, so I had that slight limp I mentioned earlier. I started to clean up the burnt fence pieces and thrown them in the trash as everyone was weirdly silent. It actually didn't register at first why it went quiet until I turned around and looked at everybody. They were looking at my leg and then looking at the president shocked. Probably for making me do physical activity despite having one leg even though I am more than capable. While cleaning up I brought that sign that talked about the area being HOA property and showed it to the group standing there. That got their attention and suddenly the talking and whispering started again. My neighbor couldn't get a word in, and I decided to milk this thing for all it was worth. I went up to him and told him that I was so sorry it was taking me so long to clean up all the pieces, my leg just really hurt. I know it is kind of wrong, 
but I will admit I exaggerated my limp a little bit which seemed to make everyone else either feel worse or get even more angry at the HOA president. He ended up telling me he would clean the rest and he was sorry for the misunderstanding about the fence. I told him that I was just trying to move here and do things that everyone else got to do like plant a garden. That I didn't understand why the HOA was an organization that refused to let me do that and tried to take advantage and steal my land. On top of keeping me out of meetings despite being a neighbor pointing out that just because I had a disability didn't mean I should be treated less than anyone else. I knew that none of the reason for this was because of my leg since basically nobody knew up until that point. The shame and embarrassment that it caused my neighbor and the other members of the HOA was enough to cause a major shift. Within a couple of weeks, the HOA fizzled out completely with claims that it wasn't needed and the neighborhood was fine as is. I knew that it was the shame I caused the president that really put the nail in the coffin and stopped the HOA from continuing to do whatever it was they were even doing. I have never been to any kind of HOA meeting, so I really don't know what the point of it is. Things seem to be basically the exact same here without it minus the random fence building and harassment. The next story is titled, Driveway or the Highway. I've already posted about my ex-boss and how she outwitted the council planning division, but this isn't her only exploit with cutting through red tape in her own way, though on this other occasion, she did have help. So, to give some background, I work in a hotel and have been here for a number of years through a change of management. My ex-boss, before the change, was something of a force of nature and a woman to be reckoned with. I shall call her by the title we all knew her as, Miss D, which was the initial of her surname. At one point, whilst Miss D was running the hotel, we had a regular guest who, whilst not being an A-lister, was something of TV celebrity here in the UK. For anonymity, I won't say who she was. Celebrity used to come to the hotel with her younger boyfriend, about who we didn't know that much. At one point, I came to work, to see a car parked up in the hotel drive. It was on the driveway leading up to the hotel and not in the actual car park. We just reckoned this was lazy parking by one of the guests and assumed that it would move once the guest either went out for the day, or after they checked out. Several days later, after all the guests who had been in the hotel that day had checked out, the car was still there. It soon became obvious this car didn't belong to a guest at all, but had just been dumped, half blocking the driveway leading up to the hotel. We checked the car out to find it had been left unlocked though without the keys. We decided to give it a bit more time and see if the owner would return to pick it up. Time passed and no sign of the owner and the car was still there, in the driveway, requiring our guests to maneuver around it when driving up to the hotel. This was when Miss D decided it was time to take some action. I know, from reading other Reddit posts, that in the US, if a car is parked on someone's land without their permission, the landowner can just contact the right people and get it towed, however here in the UK things are different. Miss D contacted the council to report the car and they replied that as it's on private land it's out of their jurisdiction. She then contacted the police, local transport authorities, basically anyone she thought would be in a position to help. Each time the response was the same. They only had the jurisdiction to deal with cars and vehicles abandoned on public highways and had no power to interfere with any vehicle on private land. Added to that, we were told that under no circumstances were we allowed to move it as we would be tampering with someone else's property. It was around this time that Celebrity came along for one of her regular visits to the hotel. Her and Miss D got on pretty well, mainly as Miss D would give her preferential treatment due to the kudos of having a celebrity staying at the hotel. As Miss D and Celebrity were chatting, the subject of the abandoned car came up and Miss D told her how none of the authorities would do anything about the car as it wasn't on a public highway. Like I say, Celebrity always came with her younger boyfriend and, like I say we didn't really know that much about him, but this was when we discovered a certain skill set he had. That night, he wandered down the drive, opened the car, broke the steering lock and hotwired the engine, managing to get the car started. This done he promptly drove off, returning a while later on foot. He never told us exactly where he took the car and we never asked but suffice to say, wherever he took it, it was somewhere well and truly in the jurisdiction of all the traffic-related authorities and they would have had no choice but to deal with it themselves and, as directed, we didn't interfere with the car ourselves at all. The last story is titled, Only do what is in my job title. Fine, good luck paying employees. So, I work for a construction company as an inventory admin. My job is to basically schedule counts of our warehouse and input the numbers they give me for inventory. 
then try to see what the problem is when the numbers on the last count and current count don't add up. There is a little bit more to it, but I will not bore you with the specifics. The problem with this job is that when you have been doing it long enough and are good at it, there is less work to do. In the beginning when counting one rack out of 60 racks of material would take a few days, it was fine because I was always busy. But now that everything is in order, the entire warehouse can be counted in three days. This leaves me bored for most of the time. So, to fix this I studied up on our cloud-based ERP service that we use for all internal and external transactions and have become sort of an expert on it. Every single aspect of this company uses this ERP service to do their job. Timesheets, HR, payroll, accounting, scheduling, management, manufacturing, ordering from vendors, delivering, inventory, etc. all runs through this ERP service. So, it is very important that this service is up and running perfectly 24-7. I became so proficient in this service, that our VP decided to cut ties with our consultants of the ERP because I could do what they did but better, quicker, and much cheaper. For reference, we were paying these consultants $5,000 a month just to be on standby if we needed them for some sort of problem that could arise from using this ERP and had to dish out more money to fix those problems depending on how many hours of their time was spent to fix said problems. Not sure on their exact rate but it was something like $200 an hour and they took weeks to fix anything, while I could fix the problem in time for my daily afternoon shit break. I never got an official job title or raise of any kind for being an expert on this service. The company just saw me being able to do it and let me fix things that happened, so they no longer needed the outside help. I wasn't too upset because it gave me something to do so, I was glad to help the company save money, even if none of that money fell my way. Skip ahead a few months. We now have a new warehouse manager and someone in the warehouse sucks something up in inventory by sending a bunch of materials to the wrong job with no records of it being shipped. We are talking half a million dollar suck up here. In the same day, our ERP had an update that caused a bunch of bugs with our accounting department. So, I decide to work on the ERP problem first because the warehouse suckup is more of a delay suckup and not actually stopping anybody from doing their job at the moment, while this accounting problem means our bills are not able to be paid. You can guess what kind of issues we will have if bills are not paid. The ERP bugs turn out to be quite big and numerous, so it ends up taking me a couple days to figure out but I fix it before any bills are actually due and decided to take lunch a little early to celebrate a victory. Crisis averted. New warehouse manager storms into my office after I get back from lunch and is livid. Apparently, the bosses were pinning the blame on him for the warehouse suck-up. And considering he is the one who oversees shipments and personnel in the warehouse, the blame is rightfully placed. He starts laying into me asking why I have not fixed the problem yet. Yelling and screaming like a child. I tried explaining that I was fixing an ERP issue and have not had time to look at the warehouse problem yet. He gets even more angry and notes that it is funny how I have time to take early lunches but not do my job. That started to piss me off, but I held my tongue and kept calm about the situation. He then ordered me to only do what is in my job title and to leave the ERP bullshit to the people competent enough to handle it, as he put it. Since this guy was technically my supervisor, I had no choice but to obey. I asked him to send me that in writing and he snarks and storms back into his office. Five minutes later I get an email stating that under no circumstances am I to work on anything related to ERP unless it involves inventory. Q malicious compliance. I do nothing but inventory from that point forward, knowing damn well that we would be essentially coasting until we hit a problem that I would refuse to fix. Sure enough. Not even a week later I get an email from HR that some sort of bug in the ERP system was preventing them from accessing payroll to pay employees this week. I reply an apology that I am no longer able to work on ERP bugs due to supervisor and to refer to the ERP system help guide for further assistance. I knew the help guide was not going to help her in the slightest, but it was no longer my problem, so I was not going to deal with it. Skip a few days later to Friday. I checked my bank account in the morning before getting to work and laughed because there was no money deposited. That problem never got fixed. I hurry up and get to work, excited to see the chaos unfold. And what I was expecting was an understatement. When I show up to work, I see the entire warehouse staff of 50 people walking out of the front door. I stopped one and asked why they are leaving, and they replied with, I didn't get paid today, so I am not coming back until I do. I go into the office and see the warehouse manager in a panic. 
He has jobs that need material and nobody to load it onto trucks or deliver. I ask him if he needs help with anything and he just screams at me to leave his office because he is getting phone calls out the ass from superintendents of jobs asking why our material has not arrived yet. I pass by HR on the way to my office and see a bunch of the bosses huddled up over her computer with her with angry and confused expressions on their face, I guess trying to figure out the problem. I felt bad for her because it really was something out of her control, but I knew she would ultimately be okay because she had been there for so long that they would never fire her. When I get to my office, I see the VP waiting for me there. He has a very pissed off expression on his face. When we get inside, he demands to know why I did not fix the problem in HR when she emailed me about it. I replied that I am no longer allowed to work on ERP problems as it is not in my job title. He has the most shocked look on his face and asked why all of a sudden, I had a change of heart. I show him the email from warehouse manager and I could see the dots connect in his head. He immediately storms out and I see him heading straight to the warehouse manager's office. They were in there for a few hours but eventually he comes back to my office. He seems calmer now and asks me politely if I can fix the problem in HR and if I can resume fixing the ERP if needed. At this point I liked the relief of responsibility and told him I would only do it if he put it officially in my job title along with a raise. His calmness turned to anger again and he says, I cannot believe you, as he storms out and returns to his office. A few hours later, he sends out a mass email that he has hired the old ERP consultants to fix the problem and that next week, everyone would be paid for the money they are owed, along with the money they earned if they return to work. This one surprised me as he would rather pay over $60,000 a year to consultants than give me a few extra bucks an hour for better work. I think he expected me to change my mind and just do it for my own paycheck, but I decided to wait because I knew how these consultants were and if they managed to fix this problem in a week. I would streak naked through the office. Most of the warehouse staff agreed to return but were still upset about not getting paid. Sure enough, next Friday comes around. Nobody gets paid again. At this point it is becoming a real problem and the entire staff is becoming agitated. They have bills to pay. I even heard a bunch of the warehouse talking about some competitors nearby they could go work for. At this point, I even considered just fixing the problem because the warehouse didn't deserve to be treated like that due to poor management. Maybe I am the a-hole here for this, but I am severely underpaid and can barely afford my apartment, there is no reason I should do extra work for free. That same day, the VP returns to my office and hands me papers. These papers said that I would be promoted to a newly created position that dealt with inventory ERP upkeep. It would be its own department and he would be my direct supervisor, also came with a hefty raise. All I had to do was sign and agree. I looked up at him after reading the paper and he had the saddest look on his face. Please just sign it. The consultant said it would take them weeks to get around to fixing it due to the high volume of clients they have taken on and we cannot keep skipping paychecks. I happily signed it and immediately got to work on the HR issue. Managed to even fix it that same day. It was just a simple problem with the permissions of HR and payroll in the ERP due to the update. Thank you for listening.